What's up everyone? Jay here as always and today this is what we're doing. I haven't had the best afternoon so I want to play a game that's going to help me take my mind off of bullshit. With more bullshit and that game is Phoenix Wright. Now oddly enough I've played Phoenix Wright before on the 3DS and the original DS. Haven't really gotten through many of the uh, court cases. So I kind of want to change that and finish the uh, Ace Attor Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney uh, trilogy this time around. So why not stream it for everybody? I think this would be uh, pretty fun. Plus, it's weird. I've... Uh, I've really liked these games. But as you can see, we have Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All, and Phoenix Wright in Trials and Tribulations. But we will be f focusing on Ace Attorney since it's the first game in the series. And we'll be playing Episode 1, The First Turnabout. Yes. What up, squad fan? Massive legend here. <laughs> what up, Indy? Oh, gasp, gasp. Oh, that that's not good. Damn it. Why me? I don't know. Why'd you bash her in the head with the thinker? <laughs> uh, I've got to find someone to pin this on. A little bit buzzed, but good, you know? Eh. Shitty afternoon. That's the reason why I'm playing a game that makes me think. <laughs> He'll make it look like he did it. <laughs> August 3rd, 9.47 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Boy, am I nervous. Right. Oh, well, uh, hello. Oh, hi, you chief. Phew, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Watched a friend stream some MK11 today, and I realized something. Uh, did you realize that everything you said on freaking Twitter was wrong? <laughs> Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you. And your client as well. Collectors. <sighs> Whatever you say, Indy. But, uh, ah, thanks. <laughs> Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe him my current job. Well, kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Oh, well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I'm kind of not up on my Mortal Kombat uh, character list. So, it sounds familiar, so I'm not really sure, though. But either way... Either way, <laughs> I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. I do love you. Very much so. It's over. My life, everything, it's over. Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death, despair. Oh. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna die. It sounds like he wants to die. Uh, yeah. Uh. Nick! Hey, hey, Larry! <laughs> Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I I'm finished. Finished! I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who, 
Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Aw, oh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? That's so sad. Sent you a pic of him. Oh, when you get the chance to see it. Alright, well, let's uh, check this out real quick. You sent me it over on uh, Facebook, I presume? Hopefully. Oh, oh, oh god. Andy, you're fucking weird, man. Yeah. Anyway. I wish I did. <laughs> uh, this person responsible for your girlfriend's death. The newspapers say it was you. Hmm. That's not good. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. <laughs> that's, that's his name. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I could say though, it's usually not his fault. He is just, he just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That, and I owe him one, which is why I took the case, to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. I, I hope so, Phoenix. August 3rd, 10 a.m., court, no, uh, district court, courtroom number two. The game looks so much better on the PS4, I think. They cleaned up the animation a lot. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Andy, Jen, have you guys ever actually played any of these games or seen it? The uh, defense is ready, Your Honor. Uh huh. Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Yes, Your Honor. I'm uh, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge for your client's sake. I hope you can control your nerves. Th thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Go. Handshaking, eyesight, fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me the victim's name. Phew, I know this one. I'm glad I read the case report. Cover to cover so many times. It's... Wait. Uh-oh. No, no way. I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, uh, the victim. Uh, of course I know the victim's name. I, um, just forgot temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is in, is listed in the court record. Just press the R1 button to check it out at any time, okay? Thank God for telling me. Woohoo! Ugh. Oh wow, what is the victim's name? Candies. 
and a boom. So let me do this. Okay. Uh, the victim's name is Candy Stone. You see very small bits and pieces. I'm sorry, my uh, chat ended up screwing up, so I missed a few things. So I'm reading it off the game at the moment. I've seen it, but Asian screaming. <laughs> oh, give me one moment, guys. I want to open up the chat actually on my phone because that'll work out better for me. Uh, we'll move along with this shortly, hopefully. There we go. Hopefully now, when you guys do a uh, message, I'll be able to see it right here. Ah, correct! <laughs> now tell me what was the cause of death. She died because she was hit with a blunt object. That's probably not good. She was struck once by a blunt object. You were disappointed in yourself for how long you were looking for collector porn. Correct! <laughs> You've answered all my questions. Now I know you're still fucking crazy. But anyway, I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seemed much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Only one picture exists on Rule 34. Well, thank you for letting me know, I guess. I mean, uh. Anyway, <laughs> well then. First, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. Oh, dude, I love these kind of games. I mean, they're all puzzle and, like, investigation type things. So, it kind of goes hand-to-hand -hand what I like. You know, really big stories and games. That's why I kind of went to these. I see the court. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Statue added to the court record. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use the R1 button to check the court record frequently. <laughs> R1 button, don't. Oh, there it goes. Haha! <laughs> A statue in the shape of the thinker. It's rather heavy. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Uh, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Didn't they make a Professor Layton Phoenix Wright crossover? That, w that is, like, the only one I don't own. I have the other two, plus this one on the uh, 3DS the Professor Layton one I haven't I haven't seen yet so but yes to answer your question they did make a crossover let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate uh oh Larry gets excited easily this could be bad woohoo Ahem. 
Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Um, didn't they all die? A little bit. I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me. You know, ever. What's it to you, anyway? <laughs> I fucking love the over-exaggerations on everything in this game. Mr. Brutz, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. He does seem like a douche, but he's actually a really cool character. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing another man. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. I mean, he pins her out to be like a whore. I, I don't really think she was. Maybe she was. I don't really know. What do you mean, one of them? <laughs> lies. All of it lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. The victim apparently arrived home from Paris at 7.30 the day before the murder. The way the way you actually get the uh, your clients like off the, you know, get the not guilty plea is completely ridiculous. Like I said, I've played through a couple of the, uh, uh, the court cases. I haven't finished the first game. Be because I, you know, it was just something I'd pick up here and there. But now that it's on the PS4, I have a better chance of finishing it. <laughs> hmm. Indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. I'll willingly admit, too, that I feel like I'd suck at these games, too. <laughs> Nah, man, all you gotta do is just pay attention to everything. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. <laughs> daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Okay, I'll stop. I want Collector to be my sugar daddy. Oh, Jesus. Andy, how many sugar daddies do you have? Seriously. Or, you know, fantasize about. <laughs> Jesus, bro. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right? I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. I might as frickin' well, man. Might as well. Can we not use the word daddy? It's really gross. <laughs> Oh, um, I don't... That, would sugar pop be any better? <laughs> oh. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Put it in, daddy. Oh, I feel dirty for saying it like that. I apologize. Oof, Wince. Dude, Nick, what do you mean, irrelevant? That cheating she dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her, I'm going to get the bottom to this. Of this. To the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motives is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. 
You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Gulp. Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did, and maybe I didn't. But that's not how you answer in the court, man. <sighs> Uh-oh. He went... What do I do? Ugh. I'll send him a signal. Why? Like, a dog? <laughs> um, well, see, it's like this. I don't remember. You don't remember. Well then, we'll just have to remind you. I got a bad feeling about this. We have a witness that can prove he did go to the victim's apartment that day. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. That's probably not good. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Schwitt. Frank Schwitt, really? To the stand. Mr. Schwitt, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Fool, you should have made him honest. I should have, but I didn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. oh, yes, newspapers, yes. Mr. Schwitt, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on that day of the murder. Oh, no. <laughs> Witness account. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I crawled in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. That's, that's not good. <laughs> now we get to pick that apart, though. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. <coughs> Incidentally, we... Why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. Please tell me you caught that. What? What did I... What did I miss, Boo? What did I miss? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Schwitt used was one of those, Your Honor. I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Perusal. <coughs> blackout record. Electricity to Miss Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. He was scared of going in, so how did he know the phone didn't work? Ah, oh, yeah, I caught that. <coughs> See, this is why you guys get to watch and help. <coughs> because you'll catch things I didn't. Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. This is where it gets fun. I really like these parts. Again, I've only played this case and the next case. 
So, anything after that, which this will all be quick, anything after that, I am noob tubing it. Alright, alright, this is it, the real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you expose the lies and the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying. Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do you how do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. <clears throat> then once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Open a court record with R1, then point out contradictions in the testimony. Um, cross-examination, witness's account. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing in an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it's. Hold on. Okay, I can scroll through it. Alright. Thinking it's strange, I looked inside the apartment. What gave you the idea to do that? <clears throat> well, the door was half open, you see. It's the it is isn't it only human to want to peek? We climb mountains because they are there. It's the same thing. True words have never been spoken. Anyone would look inside. That is true. Whenever you see, like, a door or something open, you would just take, like, a peek. All good, Indy. <clears throat> hmm. Why did Payne cut him off so quickly? So you looked into the apartment. What happened then? Then I saw her lying there. A woman. Not moving. Dead. I quelled in fright and found myself unable to go inside. What video are you finishing up, Indy? So you didn't touch anything in the apartment? Um, yes. I mean, no, nothing. Okay, what happened next? I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. Halo 2 Part 2. Nice! The phone in her apartment wasn't working. Yes. I mean, no. No, it wasn't right. But you said you didn't go into the apartment. Or did you see, boo-boo? Ah, we caught his ass. Oh, oh, that. I, I can explain that. There was a cordless phone on a shelf in the entranceway. I reached inside and tried using that to call. That phone wasn't working, correct? What happened next? I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. Let's press him. Why well, use a public phone? Well, you see, I don't have a cell phone. And being in the middle of the afternoon, there was no apartment, no, no answer at the nearby apartments. Alright, what time did you call again? I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The city to the building it was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day. Okay, but. Alright, I want to push that. 1 p.m. Are you certain? Yes, absolutely. Hmm, he seems really confident. 1 p.m.? Right. Doesn't that seem strange to you? Press some evidence to contradict him. It does, because... No! 
I do not want to do that. I pressed the wrong button. Alright. Blackout record. This evidence clearly reveals a contradiction in their statement, Your Honor. How exactly are that evidence? What? If the power was out and only the... They... They aren't, are they? Oh, god damn it. Okay, well, that didn't work. I thought presenting that, I mean, the power was out, so... It could have been, like, the area. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant so... Ow! Oh! <laughs> I gotta get used to the new controls, I'm sorry. Are you absolutely 100% positive? Yes, it was him. No mistakes about it. The witness says he's certain. That's all of it. There must be a contradiction in there somewhere. Examine the court record with the R1 button if something strikes you as being suspicious. Then find the evidence that contradicts his testimony and present it to the court. Door to door. What time was that? Isn't a man leaving the apartment a common sight? I find it odd you would take notice of him. Uh, uh, I don't know. He just seemed strange to me, that's all. Like, he was mad and yet frightened at the same time. Just like a criminal fleeing the scene of a crime. Objection! Damn right, Shion! Scream it! <laughs> the defense requests the witness refrain from conjecture. Conjection. Of course, what the witness means is that the man he saw looked suspicious. So what happened next? I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door wide open. Thinking it's strange, I looked inside the apartment. Ah ha 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 ha! Okay, we gotta get to that part again. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment was dead. I went to a nearby park. I remember the time exactly. There we go. You found the body at 1 p.m. You sure? Yes. It was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour gap? Oh. That. Oh, uh. <laughs> this is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Schwit. Why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? <coughs> I, uh. Well, I. Gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out the contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one and their whole story falls apart. Old man's objection didn't sound as good as Phoenix's objection. It didn't. It sounded really, like, squeaky, honestly. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? Now he's going to change up bits, parts of it, which sucks. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from a television. Ah, no, buddy. Oh, but it, it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. 
Now how would she be doing that if there was no power? That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about this misunderstanding. Now how do you even say that shit in court? Well, I mean, I guess she was kind of watching a recorded show and all, you know. Hmm. I see you heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. <laughs> Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. Go away, Antoine! I think that's Antoine. <laughs> cross-examination. The time of discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. You said heard, not saw. Yes, heard. All I saw was the body lying there. I didn't think to look at anything else. Least of all my watch. Hmm. Isn't that a little strange? So you're saying you heard something. But if you were so shocked by the body, you wouldn't hear anything at all. <laughs> There's that objection again. The witness did say he actually heard the time. It's ludicrous to suggest he wouldn't hear anything. Hmm. I have to agree with the prosecution. Witnesses can witness continue your testimony. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. No, it wasn't coming from the television. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Yeah! I... Well... Erg. The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Schwit? No, I... I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite... Ah! Wait, wait, I remember now. Mr. Schwit, the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. They should have thrown his ass in jail already, honestly. That and you seem rather distraught. M my apologies, Your Honor. It... Uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Schwit. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Erg. Hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah. The murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. Uh, you saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. It's, it is intense, dude. It, 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 the next case, it gets even more intense. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. <coughs> Hearing the time. I want to see some. statue in the shape of the thinker it's rather heavy it's not a statue though it's a clock I believe uh, actually I didn't hear the time I saw it the fuck <laughs> it, that's this game boo boo it's super anime it strikes me as a very suspicious mistake yes I can see how you'd be a little doubtful I'm really sorry I only just remembered that table clock a table clock. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? A table clock. Was there a clock at the scene? This is the first I've heard of it. Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. Now find the contradiction. Find the contradiction. There was a table. 
Third weapon, the killer used. Should we try to prevent that? Yeah, let's try to present that. Objection! Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock, it was this statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? Ah! You, you with your objections! <laughs> and your evidence! Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Schwit. <laughs> uh, I... I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, the statue was indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this... with his testimony? Uh, I mean, it is a clock, but... Yes. Yeah. Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hands. Yeah, not heard it. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm. Indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment. He had to go into the apartment. He killed a woman. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh, yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Schwit, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. The voice was burned into your mind. Uh, that's why you were so certain about the time. <laughs> What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless. Just look at the witness's face. Uh, Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I... I... That... That day? I... I never... Look. I... The clock... I heard... No, I mean... God! <laughs> Poor Phoenix. No, what the fuck did he just say? I hate you! It, it was him! I tell you, I saw him! He, he killed her! And he should burn! Burn! Give him death! Order! Order in the court, I say! Your Honor, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright? Your Honor. You claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. Ed, better think it through carefully. Your Honor, the sound Mr. Schwit heard was definitely this clock. The fact, which is clear if you simply... How many batteries, ask the neighbors, try sounding the clock. Let's sound a clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. Beep. I think it's 825. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne. 
can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Ugh. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Schwit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Schwit, try to talk your way out of this one. Ah, <laughs> you forget one thing. Uh oh, what's he talking about now? Well, it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. He's right, how am I going to prove that? Damn it, I was so close. Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. No, I don't. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you induct the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Schwitt. I come all this way down here to testify and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal! It's because you are a fucking criminal. You lawyers are all the slime. All slime. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. No, there's nothing I can do about it now. There's no way. Not so fast, Mr. Schwit. Oh, Mia. Thank God. Mia, I mean, Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. The Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Uh, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. So what do you guys think it is? Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason, and you'll have your proof. Right? Right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Yeah. Wait. This is why I'd suck, <laughs> because I have no idea. Maybe I could prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Right? find it and let them have it well mr. Wright you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder have you found evidence to support this claim of course there was a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt Ugh, tough words let's see you pull this one off let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow it wasn't running slow. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. there. The next day. The clock wasn't 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Schwit? Or should I say, Mr. Did it? <laughs> we got him! We got him! Bird! <laughs> Phoenix be throwing them burns out all day, every day. Order, order, I say. Well, this case was certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness, he, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright, yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. 
I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. And find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds a defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. Not guilty! Woohoo! Now it just gets a lot harder from here. <laughs> and with that, this court is adjourned. Because now all the investigating stuff comes in, and it, it gets interesting. It turns out that Frank Schwitt was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of their houses. That day, when, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Schwitt let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Schwick grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. And pretty much killed her. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Phew, I still can't believe we won. Right, good job in there. Congratulations. So thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all. Not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the she Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. Our life is over. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Oh, okay. Good. Wait, no, I mean, bad. Bad, bad, bad. Yeah, pretty much. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But you put my candy, Wendy's. Cindy, Wendy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... Ah, uh, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. Uh, Harry? Yes, you. Uh, I can practically see the headline now. Harry Butts! Innocent! Uh, um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner, movie, my treat. Oh, no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey. Here, here, take this as a present. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. But really, you, you made this. Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And and she was just playing me for a full... He switched it up real quick. Holy damn. Don't that make you want to just cry? Larry? Uh, are you so sure? Uh, excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you, in her own way. Ah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh. <coughs> I'm not just sympathizing, really. <coughs> Sorry about that. Isn't that right? Right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Uh, oh yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What about that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. 
Whatever. She probably just needed a clock, that's all. Why would she bring that big ass thing now? You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really? I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Woohoo! We did our first case! Oh, right. I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People too. Jama Queen in a man's body. He, he really is. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Fine words there, people. Stuff to live by. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Believe! <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me? We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah. Part, at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks. Ah, oh, she's in the phoenix! And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us. <laughs> Unless you count the clock he gave me. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. Oh god, what's gonna happen? Woohoo! The end! The end of that case, anyway. On to the next! A brand new episode has been added! Saving content. Would you save your progress up to- Yeah, I'm gonna save my progress. Believe! <laughs> bring, bring. Hello, this is Maya. Hey, Maya, it's me. Mia, what's up? You haven't called me in a while. Sorry, I've been so busy. How have you been? Well, lonely, and it's all your fault. Nah, I'm just teasing. I've been great. I'm finally getting used to having my own place. That's good to hear. Actually, I'm calling because I have a favor to ask. I know, I know, you want me to hold evidence for you. Sharp as always. There's a lot of buzz about the upcoming trial. I just don't feel safe keeping the evidence here. I gotcha, so what is it this time? It's a clock. A clock? Yeah, it's made to look like the statue of the thinker, and it tells you the time. No, not her! Well, you don't know if it's her yet! I thought you might like it. You've always liked toys. Hey, I'm not a little girl anymore, sis. Yeah, damn it, I'm not a little girl! <laughs> now, now, I'm a big girl. You know I'm the only teasing. Yeah, that's right. Ah, I should probably tell you the clock isn't talking right now. Uh, it's not working? That's lame. I had to take uh, the clock work out. Sorry. I put some papers inside it instead. Papers? Is that the evidence then? Hmm. Well, there's a possibility that it might turn out that way, yes. Can you come by the office tonight, say 9, to pick it up? 
I'll be in the pre-trial meeting until then. Okay, sis, but I expect dinner, something good, like burgers. I could really go for a good burger. Okay, okay, we'll hit the usual joint. All right, it's a deal. Okay, sis, see you soon. Yep, I'll be waiting, Maya. Beep. Conversation recorded, September 5th, 9, 27 a.m. <coughs> September 5th, 8.57 p.m. Fay and Co. Law Offices. Now, Miss Fay, I'll take what's mine. All right, Indy. The papers. I'm sorry, but I can't give you what I don't have. Miss Fay, you are a poor liar. Why? I see it right over there. <coughs> that must be the thinker that swallowed those papers. What could you know? No, you're not conferacious? Cogn cogniferacious? What the fuck is that word? Of my background. <laughs> Gathering information is my business, you see. I, I should have been more careful. Oh, 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 my dear Miss Ray, I am so very sorry, but I am afraid I must ask you for one more thing. Your eternal silence. Farewell, Miss Ray. Okay, maybe it was her. Oh God. What? Hoo <laughs> hoo! Fucking hell. Well. There she goes. The pretty one. Ugh. September 5th at 9.08 p.m. Fay and Co. Law Offices. Uh, oh, I'm late. Uh, that's strange. I guess the chief left without me. She said her sister was coming over, so we should all go out to, for dinner. What's that smell? Blood? Mia! Maybe she's in her office. A smell. Blood. Sis? Someone's there. Chief? Chief? Chief! Oh no. Oh no. Who are you? Oh damn. She 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 gone to sleep. The strange girl dropped out cold. I left her laying on the office sofa. I went back to the chief where she lay under the window. Ah, uh, well that's her. I liked her character. I got I thought she was going to be like a an ongoing mentor for Phoenix. Her body was still warm. I could feel it when I held her shoulder. Then all too quickly it began to fade. Until finally she was cold. Chief No clues. Phoenix, some shards of glass are scattered on the floor. They seem to be the remains of a glass light stand. Chief, it's hard seeing her like this. But if there are any clues here, this was struck. She was struck on the head with a blunt object. She probably died instantly. The thinker. Laying next to her must have been the murder weapon. The thing, the murder weapon, looks like a statue, but it's actually a clock made by Larry Butts. Huh. There are some glass shards near the chief's body. 
Must be pieces. Oh, damn it! Oh, okay. Nothing else that seems to have been a co hmm. A piece of paper. It must have fallen from Mia's hand. What could it be? A word is written in blood on this scrap of paper. Maya, did Mia write this? This piece of paper is a receipt from a department store dated yesterday. <coughs> department store receipt with letters written in blood on the back. I think that's enough snooping around for now. I'd better call the police and find out what that girl was doing here. You already know what she was doing here, you bastard! Alright, I'd better call the police. That's funny. A few of these straws on the receiver are missing. Screws. Scraws. Jesus, I can't speak. It looks like someone was halfway through taking it apart. <coughs> police! Please come quick! What was that? Someone screaming from outside the window. Oh, God. She's staring right at me. She's holding a phone in her hand. Bitch, she's calling the police. The phone receiver is missing a few screws. I'd better not use it. Uh, act. Move. Fake law officer. Yeah. That girl just now. Where'd she go? I put her right there on the sofa. Oh, I hope she didn't run up on me. Yikes. Don't scare me like that. Um, excuse me, but who are you? It's okay, I work here. Maya. Maya Fay. Maya Fay? Maya. So Mia was writing this girl's name. Maybe I should show her the receipt. I never thought there'd be a use for evidence like this outside the courtroom. Ah, oh, before Mia died, she wrote a message with her own blood. She wrote it on the back of this receipt. That that that's my name. What why? Why would she write my name? Please, just calm down. <clears throat> Why would Sis write my name? Uh-oh. Uh, now I've done it. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm not reading all that. It's police sirens. <laughs> the police. Sounds like they're coming this way. Hey, uh, Jen. Indy. Uh, is the, ch is the uh, stream all right? Uh, because the chat that I have up on my computer keeps going in and out. I just want to make sure the stream's going all right. I hope it is for you guys. <laughs> the police. It sounds like they're coming this way. Freeze! Police! Okay, good. Thank you, Bobo. All right, I'm Detective Gim Go Dick Gumshoe. See, Gumshoe. What an odd name. We received a report from the building across the way. See, we got a person saying they saw a murder. It must have been that woman I saw. Anyway, I don't want either of you moving one inch, okay? Great, just great. So what do you think about the game so far, babe? And Indy. Maya, wait. She wouldn't have. Nah. Whoa. Excuse me. <laughs> this word Maya here mean anything to you? Um, that... That's my name. What? <laughs> The victim drew this here note in her own blood, see? With her dying breath, she wrote down the killer's name. 
K -k killer Case closed. You're coming down to the precinct, ma'am. Well, what? Mia's younger sister, Maya, was arrested on the spot. I was taken in for questioning and didn't get out until the next morning. My eyes were heavy, but I couldn't sleep. I sat around waiting for visiting hours to begin at the detention center. I had to talk to Maya as soon as possible. Ah, September 6th, 9.07 a.m. Detention Center. Visitor's room. Wow. They have poor Maya locked up like a criminal. Oh? It's you. The lawyer. Good morning. Good morning. She looks so tired. Um... Are you going to be my attorney? Well... That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Yeah, it's up to you. You better give her... Give it to her straight. It's up to you. Up to me? Yes, I don't think this is something I should decide. After all, you're the one in trouble here. They're never going to believe me, are they? Even you, when you found me in the office, you looked at me like I'd done it. Did I look at her like that? No, no, I never thought. It's okay, I understand. And I've also heard about you. Heard? Heard what about me? I was talking to my sister on the phone the other day. Today was my junior partner's first time in court. Wow, really? How'd that go? It was quite the scene. Honestly, I was on the edge the whole time. It's been a while. Huh? So he crushed and crashed and burned? He's a genius. One of those strike fear into the hearts of evil types. The only thing he's lacking is experience. Huh? Sounds like it was fun. Well, I know who to go to if I ever get into trouble now. I don't know, Maya. I think you might want to wait. Give him three more years. That is, unless you want to be found guilty. That's what she said. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to insult you. No, it's okay. It's true, I guess. <clears throat> but at the same time, I can't just sit by and watch. When I think of the person who did this to Maya, well, Mia, uh, I know. Maya, there's something I've been wanting to ask you. Yes? What's with the outfit? Oh, this? This is what all accolades wear. It's my uniform, you could say. A accolades? Like people in religious training? What is it you do? Oh, it's nothing strange. Really. I'm a spirit medium in training, because that's not anything strange. To the norm, to a normie, that is strange. <laughs> uh, sp spirit medium? I'm pretty sure that qualifies as strange. Yeah, see? See, he thinks you're strange. <laughs> Freaking Phoenix. Can't think outside the box. Could you tell me about the day of the murder? Yes. Let's see. That morning I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold onto a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial evidence yes that clock shaped like the thinker the one Larry made how could that have been evidence in a case yeah but I don't think you're strange baby 
I'm talking about like a normal good I go to church every Sunday because I believe in God and such strange people no, normal people uh um right she said something about that I remember do you want to hear it in her own voice her, her own voice yes I'm pretty sure our conversation is on my cell phone you recorded it yeah I forgot how to delete those things Yeah, we don't talk about that one. Uh, the, the, don't break down the chat! So you say you have a conversation with your sister on your cell phone. Let's hear it. Right. Oh. I just remember, that detective took my cell phone. Sorry. Oh, right, of course. Next time I see Detective Gumshoe, I'll ask him for it. I'll write you a note so you don't forget, okay? Sure, thanks. The conversation I had with my sister is recorded on my cell phone. <clears throat> so you're an acolyte, uh, or a medium in training. That's right. The Fay family, especially the women, have always been very sensitive to the spirit world. Wait a second, you said the Fae family? So Mia was into this stuff too? Of course. She left the mountain to follow her career, she said. Her powers were first class too. I, I had no idea. Hmm, huh. wait. What? So you're a real honest to goodness spirit medium with ESP and all that. Yes. In training. Well, can't you contact me as spirit then? We could just ask her who killed her. I, I'm sorry. I'm still in training. I couldn't do something on that level. Hmm. I thought that would be too easy. <coughs> yeah, it... As the story goes on, more of this type of stuff keeps coming up, and it, it's it's funny. Like I said, I know to about the end of this trial, and everything new comes up. So with the way this trial is gonna go, it it gets rather interesting. Huh? Something the matter? Um, I was wondering, could I ask you a favor? This is the address of a famous lawyer. My sister gave it to me, gave me this a long time ago. <coughs> she said if I was ever in trouble, I should call him. That puppy. Did you post a puppy in chat? Well, I'm in trouble. Do you think you could go ask him to represent me? Of course. Sure, why not? I'll go ask. Thank you so much. I have no one else to turn to. Say, what about your parents? I... I see. Don't worry, leave it to me. Thank you. The trial's tomorrow at 10. What? Tomorrow? Tomorrow? What if this guy refuses? They told me that if I don't find one, the state will pick an attorney to defend me. When will that happen? They're giving me until 4 this afternoon. And visiting hours are almost up. I'd better hurry. Alright, I'll be back. Alright, let's, uh... That's a move. I want to stop over here first to see if I can get the cell phone. September 6th, Fay and Co. Law Offices. The office is filled with police officers. They're all busily searching for clues. Hey! You there! This is a crime scene, pal. No trespassing. Um, sorry. 
don't I know you from somewhere? Quaid, you're that butts guy, aren't you? No, no, Phoenix right. How could anyone mistake me for Larry? Uh, I, I, I guess I got the wrong name, Mr. Wright. Sorry about that. That butts guy, he was a killer, and you're no killer, right? He was proven innocent. Um, right, and you were... Uh, Detective Gumshoe. Um, Gumshoe, wasn't it? Dick Gumshoe. Right, at your service. Hang on, that's Detective Gumshoe to you, pal. Anyway, get the name right. And don't go calling me Dick. You are kind of a dick. Hey, Dick, get over here. Uh, yes, sir. Be, be, be right back. Be right there. Um, uh, um, you're her lawyer, right, pal? If you got business here, you'd better do it quick. You, you think I'm me, me, Maya's lawyer? Um, about Maya. Yeah? I'm looking forward to the trial. Sorry, pal. This is one trial you aren't going to win. But why do you say that? Back. Hey, Andy! The city's put prosecutor Edgeworth on the prosecution. He is my favorite prosecutor. Edgeworth is badass. Edgeworth. I'm sure you know what that means. You being a lawyer and all. About Miss Faye. Did you do an autopsy? Huh, you want to know the results, huh? No, don't you look at me like that, pal. It's no use. She might have been your boss, but that doesn't mean you get any special treatment. Alright, alright. You can see the report, but that's all. Time of death. 9-5 at 9 p.m. Single blunt force trauma. Death was instantaneous. Autopsy report added to the court record. Nice. And Prosecutor Edgeworth. That's right, pal. Mr. Miles Edgeworth himself. Wait, you do know him, don't you? Of course I do. I know him. He is a feared prosecutor. He doesn't feel pain. He doesn't feel remorse. He won't stop until he gets his guilty verdict. Aw, oh, don't talk about him that way. You make him barely sound human. It's because he is barely human. Still, I'm afraid his, this pretty much decides the case. So Edgeworth is on this one. He hasn't lost a case since he became a prosecutor at the incredibly young age of 20. Of course, there are rumors of back alley deals and forged evidence. All I know for sure is that Edgeworth hates crime with a, an almost abnormal passion. I never imagined I'd be facing him so soon. I can't present. Oh, okay. What? I was wondering, did you see Maya, Maya's phase cell phone? Oh, that? I have that. Do you think you could give it back? Sure. I mean, wait a second, pal. Tricky lawyer. Uh, oh. He's on to me. Tell him straight. If I tell him why I want it, there's no way he'll give it to me. Something to matter? Oh, no. It's just, you know, detective. Nope. I know nothing, pal. Yeah, by the looks of you, I can see that. That cell phone has a lot of numbers on it, like her boyfriend's. A cell phone holds all a little girl's sweetest and spiciest secrets. Eric, you're trying to confuse me. Sorry, pal. I already checked all the numbers in memory. Impressive. You're quite the detective. Uh-huh. Oh. Here, you can have the phone back. There weren't any suspicious call records in there after all. Seems he didn't notice the recorded conversation. By a cell phone received from Detective Gumshoe. Well, it's a conversation between the Chief and Maya. The 
check the court record to hear the recorded conversation. <coughs> I guess I've asked all the questions I need to. You all done, pal? Uh, yes, thank you. I'll be heading out now. Oh, wait. One more thing I wanted to mention to you. I don't suppose you're planning on talking to that witness. Anyway, you'd better not. No influencing the witness with your lawyerly ways, pal. What the fuck am I supposed to say to her? <laughs> Come to think of it, I had completely forgotten about her. The witness? Yeah, Miss April May. I'm sorry about this, but I can't tell you anything about her. Well, you just told me her name, Miss May, huh? So you've sent her home already then? Uh, you tried to lawyerly tricks on me now. She's not to go outside her room until the trial. So she's still in the hotel across the way. I guess I should know better than to try to get a detective to leak information. You got that right, pal. He's so stupid. He is one of the dumbest characters, I think. Time to pay a visit to Miss May. We should go here first. Talk about talk to this like high-priced lawyer. According to the receptionist, the big boss is out. She couldn't say when he'd be back. It must be hard to keep track of everything when you're a famous lawyer. Not to mention to run an office like this. I guess I'll just have to come back later. Oh, can I examine stuff first? The painting has been bugging me ever since I stepped in here. The oil paint is so thick it's practically giving me a stuff the nose. I'm sure the price is nothing to sneeze at either, for that matter. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't really see anything else I need to. Anyway, let's go to the Gatewater Hotel. September 6th, Gatewater Hotel, room 303. Well, hello there, handsome. Uh, hi. Smooth, right? Real smooth. You're the lawyer, aren't you? The detective told me. <coughs> he said, don't say nothing to that lawyer, pal. Teehee. Remember to self. Thank Detective Gumshoe for making my job harder. Gee, this is all like something out of a movie. It's all so exciting. I can hardly contain myself. Oh, well, let me go freshen up so I can look the part of the beautiful eyewitness. I pity the lawyer that has to cross-examine this one. Uh, yeah, that thing's sticking out. It's a screwdriver stuck in the straw. Going between buildings like this reminds me of a of Clock Tower. <coughs> that was the first one that did that, right? I don't remember the uh, Clock Tower games. I know there was one on PS2 that I used to play a lot, though. There's a screwdriver stuck in that jar. I wonder what's inside. Let's take a look. Hey! Hey, hey, hey! What are you doing? No touching. Oh, bad boy. Fake ass Barbie. <laughs> yeah, she is. You really shouldn't pry around in other people's rooms now. You wouldn't want to make me upset, would you? Uh, upset? I thought she was going to explode for a second there. I wonder what could be inside the drawer. Uh, what you witnessed. Do you think you could tell me something? I need to... I need you to describe what you observed at the time of the incident. Oh, observed? incident you sound just like a lawyer in the movies I like a man with a big vocabulary wink wink one of the first yeah PS1 clock tower was really good I've never played the PS1 one 
Oh, uh, Gulp. Better not encourage her. Uh, you, you know that thing that occur, um, happened the other day that the bad thing? Yeah. That was actually painful to read, not even gonna lie. What did you see when it happened? I don't suppose you could tell me about it. Pretty please? Let me see. Um, well, Chiremon. If you want to know, you'll just have to come to court tomorrow, Mr. Lawyer. Oh boy. Um, could you... Just who exactly are you? Oh, Mr. Lawyer, are you hating on me? No, whore. No, 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 hey! I'm just doing my job here. Teehee! You know, you're cute when you blush. Boy, mate, this is the first time in my life I've blushed this much. He's probably just staring at her tits. Um, uh... Right, can you just tell me what it is you do? Well, no, teehee. And you had your little hopes up, didn't you? Oh, boy. Oh, what a bitch. <laughs> yeah, I know, dude. She really is. I see there are two glasses on the table. Is someone staying here with you? Oh, what amazing powers of observation. You must be one of those famous detectives, like on television. Oh, no, not not me. I'm uh, just a lawyer. Say, Mr. Big Detective, why don't you go look for clues in the garbage, hmm? I, I really hate this woman. <laughs> Miss May doesn't like nosy little lawyers. Hmm. Oh, boy. Um. Do we present anything to her? Like... Uh, I don't, I don't really try to this place again. Hmm, seems like Mr. Grossberg is out. Well, maybe I should just wait here for him to come back. Ahem. If that wasn't the most over-the-top clearing of the throat I've ever heard. The reek of barbiness makes me sick, yo. Oh, it just gets worse with her. Wait do you see. Aha, so you're the one they say has been looking for me. Uh, yes, that's me. He looks even grander than I imagined. Hmm, that badge on your collar. Uh, so you're a lawyer, are you now? Yes, well, yes. Hey, what do you want? I'm not particularly busy these days. Please proceed. Not busy? Then how come no one could get in touch with you? Huh. Something the matter? You came to see the one and only Marvin Grossberg, did you not? Well, here I am, boy. What do you want out with it? Um, well, sir, actually, it's about Maya. Maya Fay. Ah, yes. Maya Fay. Go on. Hmm, why the strange reaction? Uh, ch ch I'm really quite busy here, son. You just said you weren't busy. I can't go taking cases on a day's notice. No, it's quite impossible. Well, wait a second. How did you know the trial was tomorrow? Um... Uh, anyway... I'm afraid it's entirely impossible for me to represent her. So, sorry, end of discussion. What's going on? He refused me before I even got a chance to ask him. What do I tell Maya? Mommy. Uh, wh why are you refusing like that? How can you just refuse like that? Please tell me why you won't take the case. Hmm, uh, um... Well... See, it's just, I'm busy, you see. But you just said you weren't busy. That's the thing. Like, you lied. Like, come on now. But the client is Mia Faye's sister. Um, um. 
Mia trusted you. She knew your her sister would be in good hands. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, I know that. However, I'm sorry, but I must refuse. Sorry. Goodbye. Creep. Fine. I don't have time to argue with you anyway. I'll go look elsewhere. Rebel. Think not. Uh, did you say something? I think not, I said. What do you mean? I'm terribly, terribly sorry. But I'm afraid that no lawyer worth their salt will take on this particular case. Terribly sorry, my boy. Now, I want to ask you guys. What do you think is up with him? Like, do you... Do you think he's just scared of uh, Edgeworth? Or... Do you think there's something else behind the scenes going on with him? Like, I, I would like to see what you guys think about it. Terribly sorry, my boy. Why? I... I cannot say. I beg your pardon, but could you leave now? I have nothing more to discuss with you. What's going on here? I'm still gonna ask shit, man. Till all the check marks are up there. How'd you do know Mia Fey? He's involved. You think he's involved? Okay. She worked here a long time ago. Quite the apprentice, that one. Learned my techniques in a blink of an eye. She left one day quite suddenly. She had a mission, you see. A mission? You could see it in her eyes. She followed it with a burning passion. Never looked back to that one. I had to ask him about his ugly ass painting. Now, Andy, why do you think he's involved, though? Like, what gives you that, like, assumption? That's quite a painting. Aha, you noticed. It's my pride and joy. He's getting laid by Barbie. <laughs> Why do you say that? It's my pride and joy. Impressive, isn't it? Well, isn't it? The color of the sky, the hue of the sea, the weave of the straw hat. It's worth at least three million. I have no intention of parting with it, of course. Pink pin? What pink pin? Where's the pink pin? No, I won't sell it. Not even to you. I wasn't interested. It's not for sale. I'm not buying. Jeez. Ah, okay. I see on his tie. Yeah. I don't know. Something weird about him feels scummy. Uh, we're actually gonna move back to the detention center and tell my Mia, well Maya. <clears throat> September six, three forty-two p.m. Detention center visitors room. Hiya. Oh, you're back. Yeah, I mean, he he does seem kind of scummy, and I like the fact that you pointed out that pink pin too. I didn't even notice that myself. Oh, you're back. Did you find the lawyer? Um, well, what do I tell her? Well, see, just be honest. I I really don't think you should use that guy. He didn't seem healthy. He was all skinny bones. That dude was big. He a big bone boy. What really happened? You don't mean he refused to help. Erp. I see. I've been abandoned then. No, you have not been abandoned. I am here, goddammit. Could you tell me about the day of the murder? Sorry, I know it must be hard. No, it's okay. All I've been doing the last few hours is talking about it. I've kind of gotten used to it. Let's see. That morning I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. That's the thinker clock that Larry made. It practically qualifies as a serial murderer by now. <laughs> it actually does! Jesus. 
So then, when did you arrive at the office? It was right around 9. The lights were off and I could smell blood. But then I found her, my sister. Thanks, Maya. Mia. Oh, Maya. Jesus. Why did I have to have names so close to each other? Damn it. Well, that's all I need to hear for now. What about your family? I only had my sister. My father died when I was very young. And I don't know where my mother is. Don't know. So she could still be alive. <clears throat> the, woman, the women in my family have been mediums for generations. They say a lot of spiritual power runs in our blood. About 15 years ago, our family was involved in an incident. There was a man, and he... He... He ruined our mother's life. Ruined? After that, she disappeared. And several years after that, my sister announced she would become a lawyer, and she left the mountain. So, you live by yourself? Yes. I've gotten used to it. Oh, also... I had to become independent, or I would lose my powers. I feel bad for her, all by herself up on that mountain. So, who was this man who, um, ruined your mother? About 15 years ago, there was an unusual murder case. It made quite a stir. Everyone was talking about it, apparently. The police were running out of leads, and they were getting desperate. Wait, they didn't use a spirit medium, did they? The police convinced my mother to, mother to try to contact the victim. Wow, so what happened? The case was solved, we thought. We thought. The man my mother helped, the police capture, was innocent. The police's consolation, con, con, yeah, whatever, with a medium had all been carried out in secret, of course. But a man found out about it and leaked it to the press. He told all the papers that my mother was a fraud, and the medium jumped on it big time. She, my mother, became the laughing stock of the nation. I see. White. Excuse me? White. That was his name. My sister told me. White. Um, just a little longer now before the state appointed lawyer comes, I guess. 4 p.m. Time's up. <clears throat> what should I do? Do I just leave her and go home? <laughs> no, we're not going home, damn it. I've made up my mind. I'm going to defend you, whether you want me to or not. Why? Why? Well, I can't abandon you. Someone else is the culprit. I don't know. I'm not going to abandon Mia's sister. Come on now. No one is as sad as a person without any friends. I know. I've been there a long time ago. Why did I become a lawyer in the first place? Because someone has to look out for the people who have no one on their side. I don't think that's why many people become lawyers. I mean, looking out for people doesn't really show that much green, you know. Maya, I won't abandon you. You can count on me. That's so kind of you. Sniff. Oh, the trial starts! That's it way too long on a thumbnail. LOL. How long was the thumb how long did it take you to do the uh, thumbnail? Well, let's fight this one and get you out of here. Right, thank you. Whew, she smiled at last. She looks like an entirely different person. One last question. Are you you are innocent, right? Yes! And I trust you. So you trust me too, okay? 
It's a deal. So what next? There's something that's been bugging me. Just what was inside the strange woman's jaw? Probably 30 plus minutes. Mostly because I was cutting out shapes on the edge. <laughs> oh, I mean... Sometimes it takes me a while because... Uh, when I'm doing thumbnails, sometimes I will cut things out of other photos to use in mine. And that takes quite a bit of time. It was when I tried to look into the draw that she got all defensive. There has to be something in there. What do I do now? There's nothing else to talk. Do I present something? Oh, maybe I present that. Hey, I got your cell phone back. <coughs> oh, say, can I listen to my sister's voice? Maya's eyes closed. She listened to every word with such intensity. Before long, tears began to roll down her cheeks. Aw. I feel so bad for her. Thank you. I, I guess we move on. Um, do we try going back to the Fanco Law Offices or do we try to go here again? I'm gonna try to go here. Maybe... Oh, God. Good afternoon, sir. Excuse me, you are... Uh, I beg your pardon, sir. I am the bellboy of this establishment. At your service, sir. Oh, right. I've just come up to deliver room service, sir. Um, do you know where Miss May might be? Ah, I believe our guest, is, Miss May, is currently using the, uh, facilities. She's dropping a deuce! Just say she's dropping a deuce! It's probably all fucking pink and fluffy and shit. If you've no need of anything, I'll be taking my leave. Please, stay as long as you like. Enjoy. Yeah. Wait, no. Hey. Why does it seem like every time I come here, I end up embarrassing myself? Oh, wait, now's my chance to sneak around a bit. Ah, I almost forgot. Yeah, <laughs> you came back quick. Might I ask you to inform Miss May that there is a message for her? Please tell her that Mr. White of Blue Corp phoned. Mr. White of Blue Corp, what a frickin' name or title. Oh, right. Sure. Mr. White of Blue Corp. Where have I heard that name? White. I bet this dude has a lot of privilege. I know it was a terrible joke, and I'm not taking it back either. That was his name, my sister told me. <laughs> White, White. <laughs> White was the name of the guy who ruined Mia and Maya's mother. Could it be a coincidence? Oh, we gotta see what the hell that is. There's a screwdriver sticking uh, out of the half-open truck. That's my chance to see what's inside. What do we have here? Mia must have found the truth. You think so? But the truth to what? Do you think... And how does that... Uh, how does that... Go with everybody, like the lawyer, this pink bitch, and everybody else. Like, how does all of it come together? Would, how do you think it does? A wiretap. What would a woman like her be doing with a thing like this? Wiretap. Found in Miss May's hotel room. I gotta go back to the office. I gotta see if I can examine the phones. There's definitely something suspicious about this Miss May. Why would she have something like this in her room? There's a story behind all of this. I know it. Alright. I'll be using this bit of evidence in tomorrow's trial. That's for sure. For Maya's sake. 
I'll get to this woman's bottom. Wait, I mean, you know what I mean. Oh, bellboy, still there? Oh, oh, time to scrap. I look forward to tangoing with you. Tangoing with you tomorrow. This way, tangoing. What the fuck is wrong with my speech? God damn it! In court. Yeah, tangoing in court. To be continued. Thank you for saving the content. Yes, we want to save here because the trial starts tomorrow. Then we get to rip this little pink bitch apart. Uh, I think I just saved twice. Old habits never die. Pinky is hired hit. Mia found he was the fraud and had papers that proved it. I look, f I look forward to tanning with you, Miss May. <laughs> Yo, I bet Phoenix does. He he gets all choked up around her. I'm looking at those big old fake titties. I bet they're fake. Oh, there's Edgeworth. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fay. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I better not show any signs of weakness today, or he'll be on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. <laughs> good luck. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna need good luck because the last time I played this was like two years ago. So, I, I don't remember shit. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, who was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder. And we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin then. If we may call, call our first witness, Your Honor. The prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. This dumb fuck. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir, my name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this floor map of the office to explain. Oh, this, this stuff is cool because everything comes together around this map. And once, uh, once we finally, uh, get further into the case, you'll, you'll see what I mean. The body was found by the, this window here. And the cause of death, loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the Thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, sir. Well, even in a girl's hands, sir. Sir, 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 sir. The court accepts the statue as evidence. Well, they're still calling it a statue. Floor plan. Floor plans. A uh, floor. Floor plans added to the court record. No, detective. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, sir. You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe. Please testify to the court about this hard evidence, sir. Maya Fay's arrest. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. It was Colonel Mustard in the living room with the candlestick. <laughs> That's what this stuff reminds me of, dude. And I loved Clue. Not gonna lie. 
The witness saw Miss Maya Fey at the very moment of the murder. Clue is such a good game. <laughs> I freaking miss it. Hmm, the very moment, you say? Very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Whoosh! Smack! Hey, Maya just threw something at me. What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in the witness's testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness in every detail. I know! Clue is awesome. Loved playing it with my family. Yeah, I'd, I had a couple of friends I used to play it with online. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It worked lots of times. So, the Bobby saw it was Maya. I should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. Yeah, apparently Barbie did see Maya. From what she says, you know, allegedly. Alright, let's give this a try. She saw Maya hit her? She pretty much seen it all. You know, allegedly. Something the matter? No, no, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. Maya's phase... Maya phase arrest. As soon as the f uh, call came in, I rushed to the scene. Who did you say you got a call from? Hey, pal. Don't play dumb. You know who. The call was from a customer at the Gateway Hotel, right across from the crime scene. Hmm. Okay, I pressed... Not sure it did much, though. Alright, please continue. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix. Right. We know that much. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why, we had an account, uh, an, a, a witness account describing her. Speak, Jay! Uh, hold on, just one second. Y yeah? If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence. She did it, correct? I woke up in the morning. Hold it! <laughs> On what side? <laughs> Shut up, Indy. <laughs> oh, bite me. Bite me, homie. Uh, did, did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. Exactly what about this suspicious woman in Pink's claim was hard evidence? What? what? Miss May isn't suspicious. And she sure isn't Pink, pal. Well, well I guess she is Pink. Yeah, she's pretty fucking Pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, detective? Um, hmm. I guess pressing can have its advantages. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up on in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There was something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, detective. Let's hear your testimony. If he's a detective and fucking up that much, he should lose that badge. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene with of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. Couldn't. Couldn't. Because... The uh, I got some coffee. Hold it! No wood flavor. Black! <laughs> Just how I like my men. Uh, I mean, um... There, there's no way. If I remember correctly... 
the death was instantaneous, then how did she write the her sister's name? It says it right there. Yeah. How you like that? That's my hard evidence. Bitch, I'm about to shove that in your face. Hmm. Before we begin cross-examination, I have a question for you, detective. Y your honor? Why didn't you testify about this vital piece of evidence the first time? Uh, uh, I know I'm real embarrassed. I forgot about it, your honor, sir. Try to be more careful. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Hard evidence. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on the piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's fingertips. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. There's no fucking way. <coughs> Detective Gumshoe. There's one thing I want to c clarify for me. I want you to clarify. A normal judge wouldn't let this go, but I look like an X-Man, so you have a pass. <laughs> well, <clears throat> before before we go on, funny thing is this this court system in this game is kind of real. It's based off of the um the Japanese the Japanese court system and it's got um American influence mixed in. That's why it's really wonky because both types of uh court systems do not match at all. <laughs> well, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim Mia Mia Fey wrote this note that she was accusing the defendant Maya Fey. That's really what you're saying. What? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Who else could have? You have it backwards, detective. But backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. Just makes it more fun that way, though. It, it does make it a lot more fun. Everything about this game is really enjoyable, honestly. And I'm kind of sad that I didn't play through it all when I first got the chance. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But... No butting your way out of this one, detective. Order, order. The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have had the time to write anything down. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? But when? Uh, I believe it was the day after the murder. From behind, the detective looks like a flasher. Yeah, he does. Uh, I'll agree with you there. It, it just looks like he has his coat almost wide open. <laughs> like, look at my dick! I'm Dick Gumshoe! <laughs> it was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being... That autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. How the hell is an autopsy outdated? What kind of bullshit you spewing, Edgeworth? What? what? A second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from the blunt object. Bitch, you paid that shit off. But there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. No, no way. Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. That is all. 
You've no chance, Yugi. I'm clearly smarter than you. <laughs> I see. Remember, he is known to fake it. Yeah, he is really known to fake it. He's a bastard. That's why he's my favorite one. I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright? You look shocked. Something you want to say? You're a sham after the detective. I'm a sham. There we go. Mr. Edgeworth, I've heard there's nothing you won't do to get your verdict. What reason could you possibly have had to request a second autopsy report? Mr. Wright, the defense will refrain from personal attacks on the prosecution. No matter, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, say what you will. The evidence in this report is undeniable. Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Uh, understood. The court accepts the evidence. To what reason was there to perform another autopsy, though? Like, seriously. Shouldn't it have been, like, a one-and-done thing? Unless it was, like, court-ordered? How does a lawyer get another autopsy? And then withhold the evidence until the last minute? Then again, we're doing that too with the, um, with the, the bug, the phone bug. Well, your honor, the evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. <clears throat> I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. Darn, this isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor, innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Oh, here comes Miss Pink! Everybody's favorite little Barbie. Let them witness Miss April May take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent? <laughs> oh, God. Witness your name, please. April May. At your service, Wink. She even, like, bounced her boobs. You see that? Or... Order! An introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will be afraid from... The want... Wonton winking? Aw, yes, Your Honor. This isn't good. She's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. That's the, I've never heard of a second autopsy until after at least one trial. It's the bitch! Why does she have her hands up like an anime cat girl? Dude, it's anime. I mean... It's a slut Barbie. <laughs> Baby, you really hate this girl. Damn. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? Um, gee. I was, like, in my hotel room. Teehee. I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Faye & Co. law offices? Um, that's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. I've had my fair share of these types. Yo, know, so have I. And it's never fun to run into them. It was like nine at night. I looked out the window, uh, you know? And then, oh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was a mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and... and she hit her. When the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy-witsy wink. Ugh. 
Hmm. Well, Your Honor, I just see. It is a remarkable, solid testimony. No, it's not. I don't see a need to trouble the witness any. Ah, wait, wait, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. What about my cross examination? I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss May's, Maya Faye's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. Why you gotta disrespect the dead, bitch? Hey, how dare you? Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? As I'm doing it. Oh, I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination. Wait, she didn't see her fall under the window. And what about the broken glass? That, those are good points. Those are really good points, actually. It was like, nine at night. I looked out the window, you know. And then, oh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The woman with long hair, that was Maya Fey. Mm-hmm, slender, sort of well, some people might say pretty, if that's your thing. She was a pretty girl. I'll gladly kill, I mean, cross-examine this bit, I mean, girl. <laughs> Throw her ass out the hotel window, right? Your thing? And a person attacking her? The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant chair. How do you know she was the defendant? Huh? Well, you know, she had a girlish physique. Women know these things. Look, I, I just know, okay? I don't, I don't really think that you can tell her physique in, in religious garb like that. The robes, you're not going to be able to tell if anybody's slender or whatnot. I wonder if we could press on that one. There was only one person at the scene of the crime with a short, girlish figure. The testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna question that. Hold on a minute. The testimony stinks. But what? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that... You're lying. Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? Er... <laughs> Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Yes. What is the meaning? Is somebody tell me because I'm clueless about this. I mean... Okay. If you had really witnessed my client, Maya Fey, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis except her. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But, but... Still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her, and so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? Rawr. <laughs> Holy shit, evil murderous smile. Yeah, you've seen that, right? <laughs> look, look at the twitch in her eye, too. What are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I, I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Now. <laughs> Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. 
I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl. I promise. Wink. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. We'll get her. We'll get her. We'll get this stupid bitch. Where does it count? I did see everything. I did. The victim, the woman dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with the weapon. I saw it. I did. That, that clock. Um, that kind of statue clock. The thinker, I think. They, uh, fucking succubus. <laughs> they omitted the, uh, the thinker as a statue again. How does she know it's a clock? Well, does that accuracy of my report not startle you? Tee hee. <laughs> fucking succubus. <laughs> Boo, you really hate this girl, don't you? I see. I think the thinker, I think he thinks thinking. How did she know the name? Very true. I mean, it is a famous statue, but she is somebody that probably wouldn't know. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross-examination. Witnesses account. I did see everything. I did. The victim, the woman dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. I want to see some because... Let's check it. Yeah, that would be the right. Yeah, if she ran that way. The victim, the woman dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Let's press that one. Is that right? As in your right? As you looked from the hotel? Um, which hand do I hold my knife in again? Oh, God. Oh. Right. It was my right hand, right? Again. I saw objection. I don't like your voice. <laughs> again, if she went right, what about the glass? True. Satisfied, Mr. Wright? Please continue. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with the weapon. I saw it. I did. That... The clock. Um, the kind of statue clock. The thinker. I think. I don't know what it looks like. A statue, but it's actually a... Should I press on this one? Yeah, I I'm gonna try to press that. A clock? Didn't it just come up in another testimony recently? W well, don't look so sour, Mr. Lawyer. You can't win them all. No. But I have a feeling I'm on to something now. That, that clock, I'm the kind of statue thinker. I'm gonna try to present this one. Again, if she went right, what about the glass? Yeah, uh... I'm gonna go back to that one. And I'm gonna present the glass. I'm going to present it, yeah. I'm gonna actually present the glass. The music didn't change. I think that was bad. Yeah, how she know about it? Your Honor, that statement contradicts does a contradict shit. Damn. Alright. Alright, that one didn't work. Uh, the victim, the woman dodged the first attack and ran to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. How convenient for you to remember her hippie clothes. That's what you... I mean, that's what she was wearing. Oh, and her hair was all done up like a bun. Sorry, what happened then? And she hit her with the weapon. I saw it. That, that clock. Alright. Ah. Uh, there we go. Let's see. Miss May. 
What you said just now was quite revealing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it was that. Revealing. Oh, you, you'd like that, wouldn't you, naughty Mr. Lawyer? <laughs> you just said that this statue of the thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Uh, there's that freaking twitch. If it was to the right, she couldn't have seen shit. Yeah, another person in much the same position as you recently called this o'clock too. And he was found guilty of murder. Order! Order! Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? Oh, uh... Shut up, Edgeworth! The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. He He's getting salty. He, he's getting salty. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes. Yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. No, I won't. But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. Oh, only once. Objection sustained. You may continue your question to question the witness. Phew, well, that was close. If he stopped me there, the trial would have been over. Hey! What's up, Cole Chris 9? How you doing, boss? If he stopped me over the trial, it would be over. Huh? What? So what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? That, that's... Because... Because I'm a dumb bitch. And I'm lying. And I freaking tapped their phones. I heard it? Yes. I heard it say the time. So you've been to the law offices of Fay Co. How did she hear the time from a clock that would be way too low for her to even hear it? <laughs> I'm good. You? I'm good, man. Just uh, playing some Phoenix right. Uh, everybody's smelling the bullshit she's spewing, honestly. No, no, no. Hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from the hotel room. Hee <laughs> hee. The law offices of Fay and Co. Where the, murder, where the murder took place is very close to the hotel. She could easily have heard the clock. How? It, it was across the street from the hotel. It's not The clock isn't going to be that loud. <laughs> uh, well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No! Oh, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because she, she couldn't have heard it. Oh, that's right! Me, uh, Mia gutted it! But poor Larry, he worked so hard on the statues. Now both were used to bash brains in. Yeah, they were! The, the, the thinker didn't have a good night there. Mm -mm. Couple nights, actually. You were at the hotel. There's no way you could have heard a clock go off in the building next door. You have proof that she could not? Uh, yeah. Amateurs, amateurs. Listen to me, Mr. Wright. In the courtroom, proof is everything. Without it, you have nothing. You are nothing. Then I would like to propose a test to see if she really could have heard. <laughs> the prosecution denies your request. How do you just up and deny it? What? On what grounds? This is a trivial matter with no direct bearing on the case at hand. Indeed, objection sustained. Damn, time to switch directions quick. Ready to proceed, Mr. Wright? 
You clicked the long, wrong one, Dark. How did I click, click the wrong one? No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because she couldn't have heard it. You were at the hotel. There's no way you could have heard a clock go off in the building next door. You have proof that she could not? I mean, just, oh, god damn it, I hit the wrong one again. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, no, stop wagging your finger. Let me go through it. God damn it! I couldn't have wrong. Uh, what? Oh, god damn it. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's, that, you know, it couldn't have wrong. There we go. It was gutted. Yeah, it really was. <clears throat> yeah, I did click the same one. My bad. I'm sorry, people. I'm a freaking noob. Your Honor, members uh, of the court. Cheers, it couldn't have wrong. Yeah, I did. Indeed, I did. I'm sorry for the mistake. It, it is inconceivable that the clock in question rung. It's empty. The clock is missing the clockwork. Yeah, because she took it out to end up putting the uh, evidence in. How could you possibly just take a look right now? Oh. See anything interesting, Your Honor? It is the def it is as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Slam! She gutted the clock. There she did. <laughs> Yo, I, I love how they just, it, it there's so much like overreactions in this game. It's 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 been wonderful. <laughs> Would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big fat liar. For fat? Well, Miss May. Oh, tisk tisk. Oh, what the fuck is he up to now? Quite a show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty somehow. He knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Alright. I'd go to court all the time if it was like this. I'd probably go with you, man. It, it does seem like a big ass soap opera. It's it's enjoyable. Indeed, the clock is empty, as you say. It can't ring. However, we must ask: When was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. We got you there, buddy. The clock might have been emptied after she hit it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? Damn right I can. I have a dark theory that Doucheworth has falsely sent innocent people to jail and to death. He... Yo, no, he... That, that's not even a theory. It's the truth. The boy likes to tamper with evidence. And he likes to straight up, like... Like, uh, course is, uh his clients into saying the wrong shit and lying on the stand. That, that, that's exactly what he's done. He did it in this trial when he, um, when he got another autopsy. And it even said beforehand that he would, he does falsify evidence. Uh, impossible, of course. I have proof. What, what? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Pink bitch probably promised him sex for winning. <laughs> Pro Yo, I wouldn't put it past her. I wouldn't. She 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 seems she seems the type. That wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> well, I was listening, and now I'll show you how I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is right there. Barbie has a highway between her legs. It's like a six lane. Freaking there and back. It's an express lane. 
Take a look at this. Hmm, that's a very cute cell phone. Oh, you have a girly phone? Wait, 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 this isn't my phone. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order, order. Uh, she's probably after the after the case. She's probably gonna take a train from everybody in the stands. Honestly, the defendant's cell phone. Th this wasn't brought to my attention, and perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it. Grumble. The good detective better remember he's up for an evaluation soon. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for this big fella. I bet if Edgeworth got a hold of it instead of right, he would have deleted it. He probably would have. I, I could honestly see him going ahead and doing it just to get rid of the evidence so he has nothing against him. He, he is a douchebag after all. Damn, looking to get people fired. <laughs> Let's hear the conversation. So you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you could, uh, I should probably tell you the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working. That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry. September 5th, 927 AM. Your Honor, I think this makes it clear that clockwork was already gone by the time this was recorded. Which was well before the witness even arrived at her hotel. Uh, uh, uh. Well, Miss May, would you care to explain to this court just how did you know that weapon was a clock? Well, well, isn't it obvious? I saw that clock before. Um, that that store was what store was that? I I go to so many. There's only one person, much worse than Edgeworth, but I won't spoil it. Oh, you know what? I think I might know who you're talking about. I'm really not sure. Um, I, oh great. I look forward to seeing that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I've been keeping up with the game. I just haven't played through all of it, so... But, uh, I think I know who you're talking about. Um, what store was that again? I, I, I go to so many. Oops, stop bouncing your tits! I forget, Wink. So the witness had seen it before. That would make sense. No, it doesn't. It was handmade. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? Yeah! Yeah, I do. Uh, bitch, that's a rare butts original. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's it's a it's a one of a kind but there's only been two ever made the witness claims she had seen it before but this direct directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court well then let's see it please produce this evidence that will prove that the witness had not seen it before and uh take that <laughs> It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. Well, what? A friend of mine made that clock. Seriously, this music sounds like the speech of a final boss, lol. Love it. It's not like the cheap toys you use, lady. <laughs> the ones that kind of vibrate, right? Buzz buzz. <laughs> Anime as fuck. Only two exist in the world. And that one that isn't here in police custody. Uh, impossible. Everything is sold at stores. Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. Oh, burn! Burn, Phoenix. Burn. Phoenix got burns for days. I told you before, Randy. <laughs> uh, excuses not on sale today. Uh, oh, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking, oh god, what the fuck happened to her face? I think I need an adult. 
Uh, what's it to you, porcupine head? She fucking went all like. She looked like she was going Super Saiyan, man. I think you broke her rage. I think I did too. Or made it worse, honestly. That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Die? Why does everybody want someone to die? Like, what the fuck is up with these people? This is not even my final four. <laughs> she has fucking hentai tentacles. Uh, whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. Uh, uh, no. Oh, oh, it looked like she took like a fucking Prozac. What the hell? This is silly me, grunt. <laughs> Told you, suck you, boots. I, I, just, I believed you, boo. Did I, um, like, lose it? I guess I did. Hehe. <laughs> like, what was up with the tongue, too? Like, unnecessary. You're in court, damn it. <laughs> Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? Hmm, oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Well, this lady is channeling Harvey Dent. Oh, okay. I am down with that, homie. <laughs> I will cut your tits off if you don't start bounce, stop bouncing them. <laughs> Gee, Indy, I mean, if you needed to see it more, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a gif or something out there, you know? Yeah, but no, she she did channel her inner Harvey Dent for damn sure. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because you had heard about it. The witness had never held the clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There is no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me evidence proving that the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. BAM! Have a look at this. Oh, that, that, uh... I found this in Miss May's room. It went snooping. Busted! <laughs> easy, Timmy, easy. <laughs> I'd rather the co Oh, God! Tim! Don't scare people away with that shit. Oh, please leave the correct, co leave the collector out of your damn fantasies, man. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you were tapping the victim. Miss May of Faye's phone, were you not? Oh, oh. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Uh, absolutely. Even if that was the case, which it is not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Yes! Can you prove that? I think... Uh, yeah, I think I can. It's simple. What? There's my proof. The proof that the victim said on the phone that it, the weapon was a clock? Yeah. So she's going down to for AT at least... At least illegally espionage. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, man. I can't speak most times because I'm half brain dead at this time of night. So my apologies. <laughs> but yeah, she's at least going down for illegal espionage. I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. 
Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Maya, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on to me for, for me. Again, what's it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like the statue of the thinker, and it tells you the time. Miss April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I... I... <laughs> Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. <laughs> the fuck kind of noise was that? <laughs> Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May? Shut up, all of you! What gives you the right... You are a lawyer! <laughs> I, it's, it's no fair. All of you get hanging up on me like that. Oh, so I'm the bad girl, is that right? Is that you, you bad girl? Yes. Uh... Ah! Wario. <laughs> that did it. The court seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final blow. You did it, didn't you? Why the wiretap? Ah, uh, we can't prove that she did it because obviously she wasn't there. But why the wiretap? Why did you tap her phone? Look at those Markiplier tears. <laughs> Oh, poor Mark. <laughs> Answer the question. I mean, if she's got to cry, why not Marky Tears, right? I guess. Uh, do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't Timothy tapping uh, irrelevant? This bitch trying to get out of everything. Uh, she's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. She wasn't the murderer, though. We know that much because she was across the street. We seen that. While this court does not condone the defense's tone of voice, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Wait, Sir White, remember? Oh, well, nah, I remember him. No worries. Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder? Even though you tapped her phone? Uh, I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? Well, damn, she reads minds. Damn, she's good. Well, you're not the first man who thought that, and of course I can and will. It's irrelevant. Beca it's relevant because she's the only one outside of the defendant, victim, and defense that knew the statue was a clock long before the murder. No, very true. No, that all is. But I can't pin the murder on her because when we showed up at the office, we seen her across the street. So, I don't think she was there. You can't be serious. No way. Way. I say way. Oh, and I assure you, I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. Oh, look at that damn face. That's that Harvey Dent again. Huh. Okay, so the killing happened around 9 at night. Why, that's just when I was getting room service from that sweet bellboy. For room service? Iced coffee. I believe it was. She's not the murderer. The clues don't add up. Yeah. Oh, they really don't. Iced coffee, you know? Like, normal coffee, but cold. Oh shit, Sherlock. If you don't drink it quick, the ice melts and then you have regular cold coffee. I, I mean, wouldn't that... What, whatever. Ice coffee. 
think I'm making this up? X the bellboy, wink. Ergo, the witness was not on the scene at the time of the murder. We never said she was on the scene. We, we wanted to know that she was lying. Oh, you mean the bellboy you seduced? Right? You know she did. If she if she didn't get his jollies off, she at least let him peek or something. So where does that leave us? It was my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. <laughs> hey, the judge said no wanton winking. <laughs> Phoenix color. <laughs> <laughs> the judge did say that, uh, you know, I don't exactly know how to call her out on that, but, I mean, if there was a way, I would. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Maya Faye, commit murder. No, they're going to let her just walk away. There's no way I could win this one, unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Sucky Miss, Sucky Miss. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, well, come on, think of something. Um, we're pretty much done with her, so I honestly think we should call the bellboy in. I'm gonna go with that, because there's no more that we could push her. We got all the evidence out of her that we, I think we can. Even though she's lying, white devil, white devil. <laughs> the defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something, to sus something suspicious here, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sunk in quite low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. But why? And what's your reason? Because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However... If you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Nice Pocahontas reference. <laughs> condition. If Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer. Thus, she is innocent. I don't think we're trying to pin her as the killer. There's no way she could have killed her. And thereby, you must also accept the verdict of guilty for Miss Maya Fey. That is my condition. No! What? I better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? We're gonna accept that because we're gonna call his ass out. And we're gonna find out what he knows. Alright, I've got nothing to lose except... Well, everything. Understood. I accept your condition. Huh. Fool. You fell right into my trap. Bellboy could point out the second person. That's true. Let me go over this. Uh, funny enough, I was thinking of Ace Ventura when saying that. <laughs> yeah, Ace Ventura. Man, I loved them movies back in the day. You activated my trap card! <laughs> da -da -da -da. Very well. The court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. Oh, now let's hear this boy. I believe we're ready for the witness testimony. Well, to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Why did he bring the... the the, the tea set and the cookies and the crumpets and such. You're in court, man! Yes, sir. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. The tea sets look looks rather heavy, so without further ado. Can he put it down? You're just gonna have him hold it? Like, why? The witness may begin his test. What if he gets pissed off and starts throwing teapots at people? That's on you, Judge. Very good, sir. Miss May's room service. Reverse trap with another trap. 
Miss May's room service. I am the head bellboy at the Fine Gatewater Hotel, in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after eight in the evening from our guest Miss May. She asked for an ice cold coffee to be brought to her room at nine on the dot. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course. If he brought it to her at nine on the dot, then she couldn't have been at the window. So, but we seen her at the window. Huh. Activate pot of greed. I don't know how to, how that'll help, but I don't care. Why does he still have the tray? Yeah, that's what I said, Indy. And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May, herself. Unless there was some... Was there somebody else in there with her? Huh. There were two cups uh, for the champagne and whatnot. He was at work when he when they called him, I guess. The hotel room. I see. The defense may begin its cross-examination. All right. I'm ready, I hope. This is it. If I can't prove Miss May was involved with the murder now... Maya will be finished. Oh, this is kind of exciting. Not gonna lie. Miss May's room service. I'm the head bellboy at the Fine Gatewater Hotel in business for generations. I believe I received a call after 8 in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at 9 on the dot. I want to see some. It doesn't have the time of death. Okay. Let's press him. Press him on that one. Nine on the dot, you say? Yes. I confirmed that details several times. She was watching a program on the TV and wished to drink after she finished, sir. Nine. The time of the murder. Brought it to her ex precisely the requested time, of course. And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May, herself. So, if she opened up the door at 9, then how could she be at the window at the same time? You are sure it was Miss April May herself? Absolutely, sir. Nobody's gonna forget that. Nobody. Absolutely? Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sir, it's an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought the room service, sir, she, the guest, sir, favored me with, uh, um, an embarrasser, sir. An embarrasser? Is that French for embrace? Embrace, sister? Embarrasser? What? Huh. It's French for kiss, sir. But not a French kiss, sir. More of a peck on the cheek. Why would she have done that? I believe perhaps she was momentarily swayed by the prim demeanor, sir. It was a moment I shall never, ever forget, sir. Of course not. Why? Why are you... Why? Stop that. Freaking lights blinking. French, hold on, looking up for <laughs> pronunciation. Sounds pretty fishy to me. I think our Miss May was up to something and wanted the bellboy to remember her. It's no good. There's nothing there. Is is that it? Just tisk. Finally. You understand, this bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination here. <laughs> it was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the sta- No! I can't let this happen. Protest. Mm -mm. Well, wait, please, wait. Yes, does the defense have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. 
Your Honor, I must object. This charade of justice has gone on long enough. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. White. Right. I'll give you one more question. That's all. Oh, it better be a good one. Okay. This is really it. Now, this is my last chance. What do I ask him about? Check-in, room service, bed making. Oh, God. Ah. Uh, I'm back. I'm back. I'm glad you're back. Thank you, sir. Uh. What do you think I should pick? Like. I'm not going to ask him about bed making. That's pretty much off. But it's either the room service or the check-in. Check-in. Alright. Tell me about check-in. Tell me about when you checked in, Miss May. Oh, alright. Very well, sir. My first thought was that she was a beautiful, beautiful person. She's just my type of girl. Why would you want that? So it was a disappointment, really. I see. Excuse me? What exactly was a disappointment? Well, I am not without charm, sir. But even I'd have a little chance with her lover there. What did he say? What did you say? Uh, 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 rather... Quiet? Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Did Miss May check in with another person? I object. That was ob ob objectionable. Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Uh, yes. I see. Why did you not mention this in her in your testimony? Well, well sir, you were... You didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention. Way to go, Edgeworthy. Edgeworth. Ah, uh, yes. Quite indeed. It was the, uh, good barrister there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... He asked me not to mention it if I wasn't specifically a ex, sir. Oof. Ah, see? Again! This asshole was tampering with evidence, withholding stuff, making his freaking clients withhold things. That's how he's won so many court cases. And yeah, again, he's probably sent innocent people to jail or to death. Y you fool! <laughs> I've done it. I've won. Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man correct? Yes, sir. Take his attorney badge. <laughs> they should. They really should. Yes, sir. Then when you brought them room service, you didn't see that man in the room. That's right, sir. Hmm. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In light of this new fact, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright, who is this other person? Simple. It was uh, the man with Miss May. The man who checked in with Miss May. Oof, your honor. As has been previously revealed, Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone. Yet Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. Fraud. <laughs> I don't care what country this takes place in. This ob obstruction of that's obstruction of justice. Yeah, it really is, man. But this uh this actually takes place in an alternate universe is Los Angeles where the Japanese and American court system kind of mingled a bit however that does not clear the man that was with her that's what I read anyway 
The bellboy, the bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. My, my, what a convenient little setup. But it's too late. He's salty as shit. Too late. I suppose you'd like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who had the presence of the other man from this court hid the presence of the other man from this court. Again, fraud. Upstart amateur. These accusations are ludicrous. Enough. The court acknowledges the defense's argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes. Yes. Yes, Your Honor. That is all today for the trial of Maya Fey. Court is adjourned. Woohoo! We got through the first day! Oh, this is awesome! September 7, 2.24 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Mr. Wright, you were amazing in there. But really? Yeah, I mean, he was sweating balls, believe me. I think I might be your newest fan. <laughs> I was just doing my job, you know. <laughs> then again, that other attorney was pretty cool, too. Uh... That face of his, with his eyes wide and trembling lips, it sent shivers up my spine. Um, if you say so. So what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Um, well, no, I don't think so, not yet. Oh, I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. A lead? That man with Miss May, he's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that anyway? I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms won't work everywhere. Damn right they won't. A bitch. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there. Anyway, this case is far from closed. She's cute. Maya, yeah, Maya's a cutie. Yes, sir. I'm going to find out more about this man. Do you think he was the one who... Maybe so. Sis. Don't worry. I'll find him by tomorrow, I promise. I'm counting on you. I asked for a full record of April May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow. But now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that hasn't been stricken from the record. The victim dodged an attack, then ran to the right, but she was caught and struck. I don't know how much good this will do me at all now. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in that detention center. And it's up to me to set her free. Ah, oh, we got the first day. That's awesome. So exciting. But I do think I'm going to call it quits here. And we have been streaming for over three hours. This is actually my longest stream. Holy shit. <clears throat> um, I mean, I'll continue playing this uh tomorrow night. I mean... I've been having fun with the game, so I think uh, I think I think we'll continue it. And uh, next week we'll start. We'll do um, uh, more days gone and uh, try to fit in some Doom as well. We'll skip uh, the Beat Saber stream and play this again because this this game is a hell of a lot of fun. But anyway, to all of you in stream, thank you for actually coming in, chatting up, and. All that nifty stuff. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy, everyone.